You are listening to another No Fair Remembering Stuff, the Tuesday edition of the Professional Left Podcast, and available wherever you get your podcasts and at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There is a Patreon button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at the Professional Left Podcast, P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. And it's not safe for work. Hey, Blue Gal, you know that dream where you're suddenly pantsless in front of a big audience or, you know, you had some assignment due and it isn't done or, you know, you're called on to give a really important speech, but you have no idea what the hell to say. Well, guess what happened to the Washington Press Corps in January 2005? They lived out that dream. Thanks in no small part to a servile mainstream media, George W. Bush had won re-election in November of 2004 despite mounting evidence that his administration had lied us into war in Iraq and that the war was a disaster. But with the exception of the McClatchy News Service, the media was terrified of being labeled as liberal and unpatriotic by Fox News, which was now virtually the Bush administration's state TV. So any story that painted the Bush White House in a bad light was downplayed or ignored which is how The Daily Show, a Comedy Central program with Jon Stewart, became, for all intents and purposes, just about the only source of honest liberal reporting anywhere on television. They talked the way liberal bloggers talked about the Bush administration, the Republican Party, Fox News, and the Iraq War. Just six days after Bush's second inaugural, when a White House reporter from an obscure outfit called Talon News asked the following question of George Bush himself at his White House press conference, quote, Senate Democratic leaders have painted a very bleak picture of the United States economy. Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid was talking about soup lines, and Senator Hillary Clinton was talking about the economy being on the verge of collapse. Yet, in the same breath, they say that Social Security is rock solid and there's no crisis there. How are you going to work? You've said you're going to reach out to these people. How are you going to work with people who seem to divorce themselves from reality? Unquote. John Stewart followed up the next night with the question that is destined to become the first line of Jeff Gannon's obituary. Quote, who is this muckraking Jeff Gannon who is holding the president's feet to the fire so that he can more easily give him a reach around? Unquote. Yes, today on No Fair Remembering Stuff, we're going to talk a little bit about Jeff Gannon whose name was not Jeff Gannon, who was a White House reporter, except he wasn't a White House reporter, who became the go-to guy that presidential press secretary Scott McClellan could call on when other questioners made him uncomfortable, who got exclusive White House scoops from someone in the White House, and who did this for two years before a Comedy Central comedian finally asked, who the hell is this guy? As usual, it was liberal bloggers who did the digging and found gold. And if you are willing to dive deep into the archives of ancient blogs, past all the dead links and pages not found, you can still find all that gold still glittering down there. Yeah, I went through a lot of dead links and a lot of pages not found, a lot of 404 and articles no longer there. But the story is still there. And the story at the time, you and I both lived through it, it first broke slowly and then quickly and then hilariously across the entire liberal blogosphere, um, led by the Daily Coast crew and John Ervosis. This is from The Nation magazine, February 2005. There's something about the fuss over the White House reporter formerly known as Jeff Gannon that makes me uneasy. No, it's not these sexually explicit photos of him that accompany what appears to be ads in which he offers himself as a gay prostitute for clients seeking a military type. Parenthetically, these photographs were discovered by blogger John Aravosis. These photos are an issue because the Bush White House granted Gannon, whose real name seems to be James Guckert, entry to press briefings conducted by Press Secretary Scott McClellan 
and press conferences with George W. Bush. Gannon Guckert, who wrote for the conservative Talon News Service, which is run by a Republican activist, was awarded such access even though he did not qualify for a congressional press pass, the standard press pass in Washington, unquote. The much-missed blog, World O' Crap, was less tentative. Quote, Jeff Gannon exposed. (laughs) Remember Jeff Gannon, the White House reporter who lobs softballs at Scotty McClellan when the other mean reporters won't let up with the real questions? The Jeff Gannon who accused his colleagues of quote, working off the talking points provided by the Democrats, unquote, and then was found to have copied info directly from GOP documents and used it in his news report. This would be the same Jeff Gannon who was subpoenaed in connection with the Plame investigation because he somehow obtained a copy of a purported State Department document which said that Ms. Plame had a hand in arranging the assignment to Niger for her husband, an allegation and document denied by the CIA. Yes, we're talking about Jeff Gannon, Washington Bureau Chief, Talon News. Talon News being the rinky-dink wingnut news service chaired by the same guy who runs GOP USA, the wingnut site that is less upscale than Renew American, but slightly more professional than Bush Country USA and apparently run by various members of the Texas GOP. Anyways, ever since it was revealed that Jeff Gannon is a pseudonym, even though he apparently gets daily White House passes issued in that name, bloggers have been trying to ascertain his real identity. Susan G. at Daily Coast, with the assistance of her readers, has been very energetic and organized in this endeavor, and has uncovered a great deal of interesting and suggestive info about Jeff and his associates. (laughs) So, just who is Jeff? Well, his Talon News bio has been deleted, but it formally indicated that he obtained a BS degree in education from the Pennsylvania State University System and attended a two-day right-wing school of journalism. Quote, the Leadership Institute Broadcast School of Journalism. A two-day degree, huh? Okay. I just I love the name of that. The Very American Leadership Journalism School of Journalism. <laughs> oh, and he, quote, lives on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. Yeah, um, yeah. Quote, that absolutely. was a World of Crap blog post about Jeff Gannon. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it, it was the bloggers who were doing all the heavy lifting. And mm-hmm. bless his heart, Jeff Gannon, who I must stress is not named Jeff Gannon, didn't just rise to the bait. He actually swallowed the whole hook. And responding to the America-hating, terrorist-loving, commie, liberal left on his own site, conservativeguy.com, which is preserved here but vanished a few days later. Quote, I've been a preppy, a yuppie, blue collar, green collar, and white collar. I've served in the military, graduated from college, taught in the public school system, was a union truck driver, a management consultant, a fitness instructor, and an entrepreneur. I'm a two-holiday Christian, and I usually vote Republican because they most often support conservative positions, like doggy style, I suppose. (laughs) The hardcore lefties are conducting an exhaustive search for me in cyberspace, which has produced an entertaining mosaic of conspiracy theories. I appreciate all the attention, but I can do without the threats on my person, property, and family. For those out there who still have questions about me and don't think I should be able to be a journalist... Here's what you need to know. I am everything people on the left seem to despise. I'm a man who is white, politically conservative, a gun owner, an SUV driver, and I voted for Republicans. I'm pro-American, pro-military, pro-democracy, pro-capitalism, a professional prostitute. Nope, nope, I just added that. I'm sorry. Pro-free speech, anti-tax, and anti-big government. Most importantly, I'm a Christian. Not only by birth, but by rebirth through the blood of Jesus Christ. Unquote. But as we are all about to find out, what Jeff Gannon actually was, <laughs> was George Santos's spiritual godfather. He sure was. Yep. He was a grifter with a sketchy past who weaseled his way into the company of people with actual power by lying about every detail of his life. And because the gatekeepers all sucked at gatekeeping. 
A few days later, Susan G. of Daily Coast found out a few more details about Gannon, whose name isn't Gannon. For example, he ran porn sites <laughs> with names like jeffgannon.com, hotmilitarystud.com, militaryescorts.com, and in case you had any questions about the military escorts, he also ran Military Escorts M4M.com, where he apparently offered his services to any gentleman in the DC area who wanted, quote, man for man military fantasy sex. He advertised the sites with a semi nude photo of himself, I guess because he's classy. Yeah, exactly. This and, male... he's a, and, and he supports the troops. That's most important. <laughs> it was all military escort stuff because he supported the war. And the troops. Blew and the out. troops. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. This male prostitute, I mean, he was charging for all of this uh, uh -huh. services, who had been sitting in the White House press room, let me repeat, for two years. Jesus Christ. Posing as a journalist, shilling for Bush, getting exclusive leaks, had been hiding in plain sight the whole time. And that's when we found out Jeff Gannon wasn't even his real name. This is from the Philadelphia Gay News in 2005. Quote, a Washington, D.C. writer who sparked recent controversy involving the White House and the journalists who cover it once played for a local gay softball team. Like others in the White House press corps, Jeff Gannon had daily access to media briefings. But his questioning of President Bush and Press Secretary Scott McClellan, who you might recall we used to call Scotty Dog because he was such a lap dog, was criticized as soft by veteran reporters who also complained that Gannon's queries were really meant to squelch Bush's critics. But in the mid-80s, Gannon was known as James Dale Guckert, a Wilmington, Delaware resident and a former member of the City of Brotherly Love Gay Softball League. He played for Woody's Bar and Restaurant Team. Gannon, a correspondent for websites GOP USA and Talon News, sparked controversy by the questions he asked, which were seen as biased. Internet bloggers began investigating him, with popular blogs such as Daily Coast joined by conventional news media. Gannon's past was exposed, revealing that he once worked as a gay escort. Woody's owner, Bill Wood, confirmed Gannon once played for the His Bar softball team. Yeah, that's JD, Wood said immediately after being shown a photo of Gannon, unquote. These days... In the long shadow of Donald Trump, the game of what if Democrats did it has become kind of a bore. Trump is a monster. We all know that. Re Republicans are hypocritical garbage people who are incapable of feeling shame over anything. We know that too. That's all an established fact. But remember, 2005 was during the before times, the times that are fondly remembered by our never Trump allies as the glory days of American civilization. Everything was so much better back then. Food was more savory and the air was sweeter. Our politics was civilized and bipartisan. And the institutional guardrails were in tip-top condition. When George W. Bush had run in 2000 on a pledge to, quote, restore honor and dignity to the White House. Yeah. Back in the good old days when Bill Bennett wrote bestsellers about the superior morals of Republicans before it got out that he was a degenerate gambler. Back when lying about a blowjob could get a Democratic president impeached, when even the appearance of impropriety was the Republican standard for launching investigations about Democrats. Even over such trivia as Christmas card lists and White House sleepover records. Back when George W. Bush had just won re-election, by running a full-on, God-invoking, gay-bashing campaign. Remember all of the plain folks people who said they were voting for Bush because he was a good Christian man. Yep, and they put, Karl Rove yeah. put anti-gay referenda on all the uh, ballots he ballots could across could, the country yeah. to bring out all the evangelicals who might have sat this one out. And that's how Bush won. And now here's a clip from Bill Maher. And you might notice a certain current president in yeah. this audio. You All right, know, let's we... talk about Jeff Gannon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I mean, Jeff the Gannon. environment is important, but my God, the White House has ties to gay prostitution. Um, no. I, don't, uh, I, uh, I, don't, I do not understand, having covered the White House for as long as I did, 
how he got, I, I just don't get it, how he got a press pass yes. on, a, on a false name, on how, an alias. I, 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 I don't I, know how that happened. You have to, you have to be cleared through well, the Secret Service in order to get a press pass, which you have to wear at all time. I mean, there's something behind this story that hasn't come out, and, clearly. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to suggest what that is. Because not only did he have a press pass, but apparently he got scoops yeah. that other reporters didn't get. He got the one before anybody else had it on your boy Dan Rather when he got in trouble with the, uh, the Swift Boat reporting. He got the story on the uh, attack of Baghdad when we started the war in March of 2003, four hours before anybody else got it. Now, I don't want to start rumors here, but isn't it <laughs> sort of obvious that he had a boyfriend in the White House? <laughs> Somebody at the highest level was spilling the beans while he was spilling how, the beans. How did, he, how did he get a Secret Service press pass? How did that happen? Okay, someone leaked stories, and of course we won't have an investigation of that, will we? But how did he get a Secret Service press pass I, with an alias? I, I mean, I, I think... I, I mean, really, I cannot figure it out. Well, what do you think of my suggestion? I mean, well, I, I'm saying once he got into the White House, fine, someone was leaking him stories. But let's, I'm asking how he gets through the FBI clearance and the Secret Service. How does that happen? Well, I think there was a mole in the White House, or maybe a gerbil would be a mole. <laughs> All right, I, I apologize for that. Leslie Stahl, I thank you for joining us. Now, I don't want to uh, talk a lot about this Jeff Gannon thing, because Lord knows... But uh, don't go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I get no joy out of saying the White House has ties to gay prostitution. <laughs> All right, I what guess, I, I, guess I get a little joy out yeah, of just it. Like, but let me ask, fellas, seriously, you... Carl, are you awake? <laughs> Carl, open the door! Yeah. <laughs> Who is it? I mean... Now, we have two Washington insiders from either party. Insider's not a word you use right now. <laughs> I want to just ask this question. If this was the Clinton White House and this story broke, tell me a angry mob with torches would not be involved. Why do the Republicans get a pass on this stuff when you know this is impeachable with the other party? The press. The press. <laughs> Meaning? I guess, uh, as, as the Democrat here, and I, you can totally dissociate, we're friends, but for the purposes of this show, you can pretend I hate him, but I really like him. Uh, yeah, the, uh, okay. Well, los amigos, los amigos ahí, todos. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is that why isn't every major network in the country investigating a security breach? Forget anything else. Right. How could the FBI... For 17 years, I was chairman of the Judiciary Committee, the ranking member. I read more FBI reports than ever wanted to know. How could that happen and no one have any idea who this guy was? Forget any, for the, everything else. Assume he went in there and he was a saint. How could that be? We should know that. There should be. The Judiciary Committee of the United States Senate should yeah. be investigating it. The House Judiciary Committee should be investigating it. And if it were the other party, in charge, it would be investigated. Sounds like you've got your work cut out for you when you get back to Washington. But by the way, <laughs> but by the way, one of the problems with one of the problems with there being not a single fora available is that you can't call a hearing. I can't. I'm in the judiciary. I can't go back and call a hearing. Only the chairman of the committee can call a hearing. Right. So, all right, all right. Moving what on. What's his nickname? Did he have a bulldog? It? Bulldog. I'm not. Wow, I've never heard that one in the gay community. Did I? <laughs> What are you into? <laughs> well, and I'm well, not. It wasn't gung ho or something. No, but I'm not. But he had websites under the names. So if they did a background check, look under primalrear.com. <laughs> yeah, you can almost not yes, I get can. a joke on this. Yes, Hotmilitarystud.com is one of them. Need semen? Call 588 Military escorts, M for M. M for M. I don't know what that means. Do you? No. Rear guard action. Okay, great. Conservativeguy.com. I Whoa. Mean, I mean, this is, we're not making this Uptight, up. Uptight, better late than never. Call now. <laughs>
And yes, that's Joe Biden and the late Robin Williams chatting with Bill Maher. And then nothing happened. Uh, we found out later that members of the White House press corps had privately and quietly, as they often do, expressed their annoyance with Jeff Gannon's relentless, clownish sucking up. A few of them even warned him that he would ruin his credibility, oh no, by being such an obvious shill for Bush, which, of course, completely missed the point. He was there to support George Bush and, 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 own the liberal media. So every time they shook their heads or rolled their eyes, that was a victory for him. Until it all started to unravel. And then an ancient, empty D.C. ritual began to play itself out. Step one came the indignant resignation. This is from the long-defunct JeffGannon.com. Quote, Jeff Gannon, a voice of the new media. The voice goes silent. Because of the attention being paid to me, I find it is no longer possible to effectively be a reporter for Talon News. In consideration of the welfare of me and my family, I have decided to return to private life. Private life being one of his gay male prostitute names, I don't know, maybe so, unquote. Step two, start waving lawyers around. <laughs> From Newsweek, quote, Jeff Gannon is considering suing liberal interest groups, bloggers, and others for a, quote, political assassination, unquote, that drove him from his job as a reporter for a conservative news outfit called Talon News, he told Newsweek. Gannon, whose real name is James Guckert, singled out Media Matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those well-known Soros-funded Media Matters. <laughs> a, quote, well-funded, unquote, liberal group headed by longtime attack dog, David Brock. Everything we wrote about him came from the public record, Brock replied. <laughs> Oops. It remains unclear how Gannon got routine White House press access for nearly two years, says Newsweek. He acknowledged he first began getting clearance to White House press briefings in early 2003 as a representative of GOP USA, a group headed by Texas GOP activist Bobby Eberly. Months before Eberly had even created Talon News, Gannon said he had no access to White House aides. Oh, I'll bet he did. Oh, come outside on. the press room, nor did he try to interview any. When President Bush called on him at a press conference last month, during which he asked a question with false info about Senator Harry Reid, quote, nobody was more surprised than myself, said Gannon, unquote. Yeah, and here's a fun fact. I did a little investigative reporting on LinkedIn, <laughs> uh, which tells us that now Bobby Eberly is now Dr. Bobby Eberly, quote, uh, conservative political strategist, talk show host, commentator, and owner of GOPUSA.com, as well as a race car driver and former aerospace engineer. Oh, God. Uh, he hosts the 13-minute news hour on YouTube. And as a recognized leader in conservative politics, he has been profiled in both USA Today and Insight Magazine. His opinion pieces have been featured in numerous publications, including The Washington Times, Human Events, Fox News, and, yes, The Houston Chronicle. Uh, he has also appeared on all the usual wingnut media, such as One America News, Fox News, The G. Gordon Liddy Show, Fox Radio, and Dennis Miller. Oh, Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. Strangely. In all of this, there's no mention of Talon News or Jeff Gannon, whose real name, I must stress, is James Guckert, not Jeff Gannon. The third step in this ritual is the most routine and depressing. It's the dog that did nothing in the night. The mainstream media completely ignoring this amazing story, which had all the elements it would have pounced on if it had involved Democrats. There were false identities. There were serious White House security breaches. John Aravosis at America Blog wrote on February 18th of 2005, breaking news, Gannon reportedly knew about Iraq attack four hours before it happened. A news producer for a major network, guess which one, <laughs> just told me that Gannon told the producer the U.S. was going to attack Iraq four hours before President Bush announced it to the nation. According to the producer, Gannon specifically told them that in four hours, the president was going to be making a speech to the nation 
announcing that the U.S. was bombing Iraq. The producer told me that they were surprised that Gannon, working with such a small news outfit, could have access to such information. But what do you know? He was right, the producer said today. The producer went on to say that Gannon often had correct scoops on major stories, including information about Mary Mapes and the Dan Rather Bush AWOL scandal that this news outlet got from Gannon before any had the information publicly, unquote. And at the center of it all, there was a gay male prostitute, apparently wandering around the White House at will. This story had everything. It, it really did. It had everything you could possibly want. And the reaction from those guardians of democracy in the media was silent. This is from the late, great Eric Bollard. Quote, See no Gannon, hear no Gannon, speak no Gannon. Why has the mainstream media ignored the White House media access scandal? Ordinarily, revelations that a former male prostitute, using an alias, Jeff Gannon, and working for a phony news organization was ushered into the White House without undergoing a full-blown security background check in order to pose softball questions to administration officials would qualify as news by any recent Beltway standard. Yet, as of Thursday, ABC News, which produces Good Morning America, World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, Nightline, This Week, 2020, and Primetime Live, has not reported one word about the three-week running scandal. Neither has CBS News, The Early Show, The CBS Evening News, 60 Minutes, 60 Minutes Wednesday, and Face the Nation, close parentheses. NBC and its entire family of morning and evening and weekend news programs have addressed the story only three times. Asked about the lack of coverage, spokeswomen for both ABC and CBS said executives were unavailable to discuss their network's coverage. Oh, they're not here right now, but we'll talk to them at some point in the future or not. Perhaps nobody is surprised that Republican-friendly Fox News has gone to extraordinary lengths to avoid covering the Guckert story and the embarrassing questions it raises for the Bush White House. Since the story began to take shape earlier this month, Fox News has filled more than 500 hours of programming. During that span, the name Jeff Gannon has been uttered just five times on the air, according to a search of the LexisNexis electronic database of television news transcripts. And at no point have the facts surrounding the story been explained to Fox viewers. Dependable Republican ally Matt Drudge, who in the past has gleefully trumpeted media scandals, has also been allergic to Gannon Gate, posting just one link to date on his website, unquote. This was not the chin deep in scandal since day one Trump administration. This was the God-fearing, Bible-quoting, incessantly moralizing Bush White House. And from the mainstream media, nothing. While the liberal blogosphere jumped up and down and shouted as loud as we could, why can't you see that there's something terribly wrong here? Comedians and comic strips stepped in to do the job the mainstream press would not do. And in that moment, Jeff Gannon's career as a, quote, journalist, unquote, ended. From Vanity Fair, on the air, in print, even in Doonesbury, he became a punching bag and a punchline. He actually had two jobs. One obviously was sleazy and shameful, and the other was as a gay male prostitute, Bill Maher joked. Gannon's career stopped dead in its tracks. He left his job at Talon News, then Talon News scrubbed his stories from its website, then Talon News suspended operations. The right-wing network that had given Gannon an online radio program, pulled the plug. Conservative stalwarts such as Limbaugh and Sean Hannity, who had once called Gannon a terrific Washington bureau chief and White House correspondent, suddenly piped down. As usual, the Limbaugh, Fox, right-wing echo chamber never shuts down, but also never corrects itself. Yeah, the machine just keeps running. And then just weeks after he had closed his website down, it reopened with the headline, Jeff Gannon, a voice of the new media, so feared by the left, it had to take me down. Uh -huh. And suddenly he was being interviewed by Tucker Carlson and Anderson Cooper and Campbell Brown. 
He claimed that he had turned down invitations from Keith Olbermann and Chris Matthews. The New York Times Magazine did a Q&A with him, and he boasted that Maureen Dowd was obsessed with him, which is no great shakes. She's obsessed with all the wrong people. Now, the next step in the DC redemption ritual would have been a book deal. But once the talking heads had squeezed all the juice out of his story, Gannon Guckert slid back to being an embarrassment to the mainstream media and the conservative media that everyone wanted to just leave behind as quickly as possible. Forgotten as just one more dent in a Republican Party that was about to be pounded by a thousand heavier blows. In 2007, and still under the name Jeff Gannon, he self-published a book entitled The Great Media War, A Battlefield Report, unquote. And here is the awesome blurb from that book. Quote, liberal media bias is an established fact, and Jeff Gannon witnessed it firsthand while serving behind enemy lines in the White House press corps. Gannon's story of how he was driven out of the White House illustrates the challenges conservative journalists face in a profession that is institutionally and genetically liberal. Part of this book is an account of what members of the old media, Democrats, and the liberal activists will do to keep conservatives out of mainstream journalism. It serves as a warning to all journalists as to what can happen when politicians and activists object to their reporting, unquote. Guess what? The book went nowhere. (laughs) And the few reviews it got were either terrible or filled with terrible sex puns. Yeah. So many other wingnuts with much better media connections had already flooded the market with, OMG, the liberal media silenced me. (laughs) Trash that it never really had a chance. Maybe if he'd written about the Bush administration's ties to gay prostitution, things would have worked out better for I Jeff. Would, I would have bought that book. I would have given it away as <laughs> Christmas presents. Absolutely, but it's no. It's pretty clear that whoever his contact was in the White House was someone who could make life difficult for the members of the White House press corps that brought it up. Yeah. That's definite. One maddening follow-up to this story, because everything eventually becomes the subject of a ponderous panel discussion. In 2006, Jeff Gannon, John Erevosis, and my old pal Pam Spaulding of Pam's House Blend were all scheduled to be on a panel, ostensibly to discuss the state of journalism and so forth. And this panel discussion was sponsored by the Annenberg School until Erevosis and Spalding found out what the topic was really going to be. From John Erevosis in 2006, quote, I canceled my appearance on the upcoming panel with Gannon slash Guckert, the homophobic White House Republican prostitute accused of plagiarism. We, Pam and I, were going to be on a panel, but the panel moderator who works at the Annenberg School isn't interested in the Gannon issue being one of the main topics we discuss on the panel, i.e., she wants to have Gannon on the panel as an actual expert blogger and gay rights savant. Jesus. The moderator literally told me that rather than have the panel devolve into a discussion about the Gannon issue, she'd rather have Gannon and me talk about ex-gay conversion therapy. And what, pray tell, is Gannon's expertise on ex-gay conversion? That he may have once charged an ex-gay $200 an hour? Yeah. Pam Spaulding of Pam's House Blend and I simply could not lend our names to giving Gannon credibility as an authentic gay journalist and civil rights pundit, as though somehow Gannon is the respectable conservative counterpart to our blogs and our voices. So we both pulled off the panel last night after five days of begging the moderator and the conference organizers to give the people what they want, a panel discussion about the Gannon affair from last year, or at least making the Gannon issue one of the main issues the panel would discuss. The response we got from the panel moderator was that we could certainly mention Gannon in our introduction or our responses to any question. Gee, That's swell of you. It's the National Press Club all over again. Somehow the fact that Gannon was exposed as a $200 an hour hooker while writing homophobic articles for some far-right religious rights suck-up rag now establishes him as a credible journalist when he wasn't before. 
He's been accused repeatedly of plagiarism and has yet to prove otherwise. Why not put the Washington Post ex-blogger, the one who had to quit because of his serial plagiarism, on a panel and get his expert advice on journalistic research and ethics? Unquote. And here's a little fact that I made me smile when I read that paragraph. Mm-hmm. Um, a fun fact you can use to impress your friends at parties. That Washington Post ex-blogger, the one who had to quit because of a serial plagiarism that Erebos refers to, do you know who that is? No. That's Ben Dominic. Oh, Lord. The same Ben Dominic whose career was saved from oblivion thanks to his friends Chris Hayes and Ezra Klein repeatedly featuring him on their respective MSNBC programs. Dominic then parlayed that into a regular gig at CBS, married John McCain's horrible daughter, and founded the loathsome Trump apologist Federalist website. Yeah, I think he did the Federalist before he married Megan McCain, though. Oh, I, I right? don't have these quite on the timeline, but okay. he was washed up. And yeah. first, actually, first he was given pocket change by, I think... Um, uh, Breitbart. They they, yeah. they cooked up some award and gave him an award for 10 grand to tide him over. Then he went to work for the Heartland Institute here in mm-hmm. Chicago, in Illinois, which is a libertarian site. And then he started getting more exposure. And then his good friends, who were his age and also men, also white guys, Chris Hayes and Ezra Klein, put him on MSNBC over and over again as their favorite conservative. And that saved him. And he went on to become the horrible person and Fox News contributor he is today. I also think it's sad to think about the principled stand that Erevosis and Pam took. Yep. And to realize the number, first of all, the number of really honorable bloggers who have quit blogging. Yeah. And also uh, the number of dishonorable bloggers who are more than happy to share a panel discussion with anybody on anything to get their name out there now, you know, and go to Politicon and sit there next to Ann Coulter and, you know, whoever it is, just for the exposure. I mean, it's really sad. Well, there's a there's a C-SPAN tape out there that was a little too long for this this podcast. But when Erevos refers to the National Press Club, it was a panel on blogging and journalism where Jeff Gannon was plugged into the panel next to Anne, Anne-Marie Cox and next to John Iglesias to talk about mm-hmm. journalism and blogging. And there was a, a long email sent by pretty much every prominent blogger you could think of saying we the undersigned really object to this happening Mm -hmm. because the people who did the heavy lifting on the story gannon is the story he's not just a journalist he's the problem why is he on a panel with people who are just being goofy about it and it was signed by steve gilliard it just a whole ton like 15 20 major bloggers and of course national press club just blew him off and put him on c-span and that's because why he's talking DC Beltway insider bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And that's DC Belt, uh, Beltway insider bullshit is why Ben Dominic still has a job yeah. and has a very yeah. profitable job. So, yeah. but as you know, uh, Jeff Gannon missed the whole Ben Dominic boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. these days, the only stories you'll find out there are about Jim Guckert doing guerrilla gardening in the Washington, D.C. area a few years ago. His Jeff Gannon alias has been jettisoned, and his Facebook friends include Ann Coulter, Donald J. Trump, Dead Rush Limbaugh, the Community News, and the Conneaut Lake Youth Football Program. Yeah. He's just a guy living in the suburbs doing gardening now. Um, And in the end, the story of his very quick rise, very, very quick and, uh, and hilarious fall, uh, is much less important, I think, to our discussion of politics and media than what the story tells us about the forces that shape our media and our politics. It was a flashing red light warning of the weaknesses in the mainstream media when it came to policing its own members and the cowardice of the mainstream media when it came to reporting on Republican scandals and the eagerness of conservative media to embrace any bottom feeder that advances its agenda and most importantly for this, you know, no fair remembering stuff blog of ours or podcast of ours, how quickly and efficiently the media can just wipe a story from the public memory when it becomes an embarrassment to the Beltway media itself. In the end, to paraphrase the Joker from The Dark Knight, James Guckert wasn't a monster. He was just ahead of the curve. 
Don't forget, we're always looking for more Patreons to make this podcast fly. So if you can afford to support us in that way, please do so at patreon.com slash proleftpod. You can become a monthly donor or you can become an annual donor. And thank you for that. See you next time. And we won't charge you 200 bucks an hour for it. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. The Professional F Podcast No Fair Remembering Stuff Tuesday edition is produced under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2022-23, DGBG Productions. Productions.